So the Arizona Department of Water Resources and our water conservation partners from around the state invite you, your family, and your neighbors to join in the celebration of Water Awareness Month, or WAM, as we like to call it. Uh, the WAM website, which will be added to the chat for your convenience, was first launched in 2011 and is overflowing with ideas and activities to help you learn more about water conservation and become more water aware of our state's most precious resource, water. Uh, water is a serious uh, subject in Arizona. The availability and quality of our water supply is critical to our quality of life and our state's status as a world-class destination. The essential and precious resource was recognized by Arizona's governor in 2008 with an executive order that designates April as Water Awareness Month. Participating in a low water use lifestyle is a way each individual and business in Arizona can help ensure a long-term sufficient water supply. You can make a difference in our future by making small changes starting today. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow our tweets. Uh, many thanks to Arizona's water awareness partners from around the state who contribute events, tips, and resources to the website and help promote water awareness. And here are our speakers for today in this introduction to water conservation technologies. Uh, Victoria Castor is the water conservation and sustainability coordinator for the city of Peoria and has been working in this field for over 10 years. Victoria is an Arizona native and a master gardener that enjoys helping others learn all about the desert and landscaping best practices. She is representing Water Use It Wisely today, which is an outreach campaign that promotes water conservation ethics. After Victoria, we will have Doug Donahue representing the company Ewing. Doug uses his applied knowledge of irrigation to provide supplies and solutions to large commercial irrigation and landscape contractors in the greater Phoenix area. As offering extended support to Ewing's customer base in Prescott and Flagstaff. Before joining Ewing, Doug spent 17 years in Rainbird in several different capacities, including district manager in the Midwest and contractor accounting manager in the Southwest. Thank you both so much for being here, and we can now start with the webinar. I will be advancing the slides for you guys. All right. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome. Um, they already did an intro, so we can go ahead and skip to the next slide. So, first, we're going to talk about who Water Use It Wisely is, where to find us, some of the information that is provided by Water Use It Wisely, additional resources, and then at the end, there will be a time to maybe how you can get some goodies. <laughs> next slide. So, Water Use It Wisely is an outreach campaign that was launched in 1999 to promote ongoing water conservation ethics here in our state. The initial partners were Mesa, Phoenix, Scottsdale, Chandler, and others. And really the focus of this campaign is that if we act regionally, so you know, statewide, our messaging becomes much more concise and much more clearer. And we really like to take a step and kind of look at the difference. So in Arizona, we like to think we have a culture of conservation. We have been focused on water conservation in the state since uh, the Groundwater Act was passed in 1985. So we're talking 30, 30 years of messaging and of trying to create this culture of conservation. So conservation is long term, whereas um, things like drought shortage and having to have shortage response and messaging, that's going to be short term. So that's kind of a different can of worms. Um, and so having a regional message and the shared resources and guides that we provide through our state are really important in providing that necessary consistency and that voice about um, this culture of conservation that we want here in the state. Next slide or next click. 
So you'll notice the logos that we have. Um, the logo that you might be familiar with is that top logo. So that is the original Water Use It Wisely logo, but you guys are kind of getting a sneak peek. So here, just starting uh, next month, we are updating our website and our logo to be the more Arizona specific blue one that you see on the bottom. So if you see uh, both logos, just know that that's why we're, we're changing it up this next month. Next slide. So Water Use It Wisely is compromised of 19 different partners. And so these partners span the state and they're most of our cities, our water providers and other entities that really deal with water in our state. These are experts in their field. They are conservation experts, they're landscaping experts, uh, efficiency experts, water resource folks. So these are the people that are really creating and um, making them these guides and the messaging and the resources that are on Water Use It Wisely. So we are very much factual based. We are local based. Everything's coming from here um, in our state. And then we also partner with the uh, Maricopa County Extension Office. So they're of course based from University of Arizona Research and Studies. So all of our information that we're providing is from experts and, and from these scientific studies that we've crafted into easy to read and explain uh, resources for our residents. Next slide. So our mission is very simple, but it is to keep water conservation on the forefront of people's minds. And so this little image of the fish, right? You've got fish that are swimming and living in water and they probably have no idea, right? Like what's water? Well, it's really easy to lose sight of, of how important and how much water we are using in Arizona. Um, every time we turn the tap on or we flush the toilet, the water comes. So we don't always recognize our usage until something happens. So right, maybe you have a line break and, and the water doesn't come on when we turn the tap. That tends to be when we recognize you know, our, our water usage. And so it's really trying to keep the importance and the precious nature of water in the desert at the forefront of everyone's mind. Next slide. So I love this. So it's, don't ask us to save water, tell us how. This is really the cornerstone of Why Is It Wisely's messaging. This started back from the early days when they surveyed the public. We found out that the public doesn't want to be asked, save water, save water, or guilted or scared of using fear tactics, right, into conserving water. They want practical tips on how, right? So tell us how to save water. And so that's really been the basis um, and the crux of all of our guides and resources, really focusing on easy ways to tell folks how they can actually save water and save money um, at home. The next slide. So next is where to find us. So click on. So Water Use It Wisely has, is we're just about everywhere that most folks are um, here marketing wise. We have a really fantastic website, which is wiseitwisely.com. There are monthly newsletters and blogs. We're on every social media platform. Um, We've had lots of information on TV and radio and print. Um, maybe you guys have heard or seen this on the Pandora app or on Snoring Living before, so our, our spread is, is pretty far. And then our partners also uh, work to take the Water Use It Wisely uh, messaging to events and things regionally as well. Next slide. So here is our website. Um, it's very robust. We've got over 100 pages of information. You'll notice that blue box that's there kind of on the right side of the website. That is where you can sign up for our newsletter. That'll play in a little bit later uh, as so how that can be important. We've got information on outdoor uh, water, indoor water saving facts, kid pages, teacher resources. So a whole bunch of information that's easily attainable for everyone. Next slide. Again, we're on all the platforms and we really understand that the messaging needs to really work in a timely manner. So uh, we have exciting maybe seasons, you can call them, right? We have kind of spring, mostly summer. Maybe we can toss in some monsoons in there if we're lucky. Um, and so we really wanna make sure that our messaging uh, works for that time. So of course, wildflowers are for the season. Um, monsoons, we try and make messaging and tips of, of saving water that tie into our season. So um, lots of fun things to be found on our social media platforms. Next slide. 
community events. So really it's the partners that are kind of taking more use it wisely on the road um, and showcasing it at the different events throughout the, the region. These are there's two things on here. I hope that you guys have are familiar with and maybe have seen in your own community before. So on the left side, there is the water tower. So this is a traveling tower. Um, it travels to the different partners uh, each year, usually about once a month. And usually it's at libraries and rec centers or um, city halls even. And this tower is made up of 120 uh, gallon jugs. And that is the average water use per person per day here in our region. Um, it's one thing we talked about, right? Sometimes it's hard to understand and keep water at the forefront of our mind. But when we can tie that to this visual symbol of how much water each person is actually using, it, it really is impactful, right? It changes it from just turning on the faucet and knowing it's there. There's a really great graphic that goes with this that's usually on the table that breaks down that water use into what percentage of that is outdoors, what's indoors, um, part of appliances. So it really kind of gives you a, a great insight into the actual water use that you're, you're doing daily. Of course, there in the center is Wayne Drop. So Wayne Drop is our mascot for Water Use It Wisely. Um, he loves to come to these community events as well as any type of school programs or kids with the children. Of course, they really love the mascot. Um, and so hopefully you guys are familiar with Wayne and he likes to pop around town and and uh, showcase so uh, his water skills uh, at events as well. Water Use It Wisely has also been um, at regional things that you may have seen, such as the Nature Connects exhibit um, at the zoo that was, I believe, about two years ago. So we're out there in the public trying to reach um, everyone where people are at. Next slide. So the information we provide, let's get to the goodies, the details here. Next slide. So Water Use It Wisely is somewhat known for our 100 plus tips. And so we kind of have the slogan, there are a number of ways to save, but they all start with you. And that's kind of our number one tip is that it's really right. You, you're the device. You're, you're the best water saving resource that you have. The other tips are focused in on these everyday items, such as that first one, which is a razor. Um, you think, well, how does a razor save water? Well, if you can tie that razor to the tip, which is if you plug your sink and just uh, fill it and rinse out the razor through that rather than running the water, that can save 300 gallons a month. So now, hopefully, every time you see that razor, it's now tied into a water saving tip. So that kind of makes that razor a, a water saving device, so to speak. One of my favorites is number 50. So that is your water meter. Um, and this is something I'm actually going to walk you through the whole process so that hopefully by the end, every time you now see a water meter, you'll be thinking of, of this. Um, so that water meter, it is usually in that metal lidded or plastic lidded box that is right by your driveway or your sidewalk area in front of your home. Um, give it a tap right before and then open it up and uh, there should be a water meter looking just like that image there. Um, the register, sometimes you have to flip a lid open to read the actual register. And the tip is what you do is you make sure all the water is off in your house and that your landscaping is not going you jot down what that number is. Now, some registers will actually switch to different numbers, so it will tell you your total use and then it goes to gallons per minute. Some of them even have a, a nice little, it's called a leak indicator light. It's usually a red little flashing. If you notice something like that, right, there's a really quick clue that, hmm, there might be something going on. So you jot down what that number is. You come back in about an hour or so um, if you haven't used any water in the home and you see if that number has changed. So if that register, right, if that meter has rolled over at all, even though you know there hasn't been any water use going, that means that you have a leak, that there's some amount of water that's constantly rolling through that meter. So that is the first kind of step. Anytime you have a high water use bill or if you have questions about something going on in your landscape or in your home, that's the first step is to go check your meter. And now hopefully every time you guys are walking through or maybe doing landscape work and you, you notice that box in your yard, it'll remind you to think of, Hmm, when's the last time I've, I've checked my meter for a leak? Next slide. So this might be a shocking fact for some, but here in Arizona, up to 70% of water use is outdoors. So this is really a strong reason why a lot of the water conservation messaging and tips and information you see is focused on outdoors. And that's simply because it's the lowest hanging fruit. That's where a bulk of our water use is. 
And this is very specific to Arizona. You go to any other state, right? And this doesn't necessarily apply. And so again, our, our climate really speaks to the fact that we really have to look locally. We can't apply things um, that are used elsewhere. We really have to kind of gather our own data and research and our own methods for being efficient here in Arizona. Next slide. So landscaping info, we're gonna go through a lot of these on the list in more detail, but lots of outdoors tips. We've got the landscaping watering guide, which I'll chat about more. Um, really, most importantly, and this is a fantastic resource for everyone, is that the Water Is It Wisely website has a calendar. And all of those 19 partners, many of us offer local uh, workshops and classes on water conservation. And we all provide that information to Water Is It Wisely. So it's like one stop shopping for everyone, right? You go to this one calendar and you can see all the different classes on water conservation across the valley. Um, even if your city isn't offering that class, many cities, don't mind if folks from other cities come in and just take the class either. And so it's a great way to be like, hmm, my city might offer it, but, but Phoenix is having something cool. And so uh, it's just a one-stop shopping, so to speak, for education opportunities here in the Valley. We've got special pages on specific landscape topics, a 10-part video series, and then we'll talk a little bit about these micro planting sites. Next slide. So this is an example of one of our detailed landscaping pages. Uh, we have one on rainwater harvesting, turf grass, pools and spas, as well as how to hire a landscape pro. Um, those are all really popular things that as conservation folks in the Valley, we get questions on all the time. So the one that we're showing as an example is rainwater harvesting. And that first page gives you really the basics you need to know of why it's important, how much water you could potentially collect, um, some of the bare bones, but for those that are ready to take a deeper dive and maybe they want to design and create their own system, we always have resources to local links. So resources that are detailed and research based that are also local right at the bottom of the pages. And so there's always a way to get um, more details going on to through the next site there. We also have a plant of the month blog. So in Arizona, it's, it's easy to think that all of our low or low water or desert adaptive plants are, you know, cactus or your typical things that people see and they kind of maybe get bored with. But really, there's an abundance of desert adaptive plants that do remarkably well here in our climate. And so this blog is a way to highlight all the different plants and to give folks an idea of some of the different things that they can plant and use in their own landscape. Next slide. The 10 part DIY video series. So uh, a few years ago, Water Is It Wisely was able to do a drab to fab backyard rehab. So it was a contest where residents got to win a, a rehab on their landscape. And we had a fantastic resident um, who won, who was happy to help us make these 10 part video series that basically walk through the whole transition. And so what this means as a resource for you all is that no matter where you are in your stage of trying to figure out um, your outdoor landscape and watering, there's a video that covers that part. So whether or not it's trying to figure out what to even do in your landscape or how to change it to the actual design, or maybe it's you already have a mature landscape, but you're not sure if you're maintaining it properly. There's a video for, for maintenance and there's a video for that design. So there's something for everyone um, when it comes to this 10 part series. All you have to do is when you're on the website, you see the little video clip of a Wayne drop. You just click through those purple arrows to go to the different um, videos and the different topics that are there. So easy and right there for everyone. Next slide. So our microsites. So Water Use It Wisely just recently created these planting microsites and it's called Water Plant It Wisely. And what this is, is really to focus on spring and fall, of course, are the prime times for a lot of landscape renovations and landscape work in Arizona. And again, going back to 70% of our water use is outdoors, um, this is a, a really good time that you can potentially throw in some efficient plants and new irrigation systems. And so the site has taken all this information and really condensed it, these little micro sites. So it's one stop shopping basically for all of your plant and your design and your irrigation uh, resources needs. And so it's a really concise way to get a lot of that information um, during these high planting seasons. So I encourage you, if you've got a project going on right now with your landscape, uh, check out Water Plant It Wisely to have that quick guide to all of those goodies that we offer on landscaping. Next slide. 
So landscape watering, um, we've got the page that has all those links to those sites that we talked about, those landscape specific ones. But you'll notice those three resources on the bottom. Um, I'm going to talk specifically about that middle resource. So that is the landscaping water guide. And this is the one guide that I hand out to every resident that I come in contact with when I can, because it walks you through that understanding of what are my plants water needs? Am I providing the right amount of water? And then how frequently to do that. So that little chart that is on that um, booklet screen there, basically it goes through the trees, shrubs, grass, cactus, and then it breaks it down into high water use or low water use plants. And then it gives you the frequency of watering for each season. So note that it's never one day. You should never be watering your plants once every day unless you maybe have a veggie garden, right, that you're hand watering. Um, but to be able to have that proper frequency, you also have to make sure you're watering to a proper depth. Um, and this is really important in the desert because we want to have resilient, healthy plants. And to do that, we have to make sure that they have proper and deep roots. So for your grass and your annuals, you want to water to a depth of one foot. For shrubs, you want to water to a depth of two feet. And for trees, you want to water to a depth of three feet. So even deeper for trees. And when you can get the water that deep, and make sure you're watering not just at the trunk of the tree, right? But we're watering at the drip line, so at the edge of that canopy and providing enough water, then you can go to that frequency and you have a really resilient and a healthy yard that can help get you through these hot summers that we uh, seem to be having. Um, hopefully we'll get monsoons this year, but last year we didn't even get the monsoons. So um, definitely will help your plants thrive during this time. Next slide. So, Lastly is gonna be additional resources. Next slide. So we have a website for kids. Um, there's games called the Tip Tank. We've got adventure booklets. And again, this is all focused on local water sources and in Arizona. So it's nice to have that Arizona-based focus when it comes to all these goodies for the kids. Next slide. And then we have information for teachers. So we do offer lesson plans and curriculums as well as activity books and resources for those that are educators and want to focus on water and conservation in the classroom. Next slide. Prize offerings, right? I, I teased you all with this earlier. So why is it why is it said that if you sign up to that e-newsletter, which is that blue box that was on the website right in the front page, um, by April 13th, three people will be selected to win a bag of goodies of Water Use It Wisely swag, including a beanie and, and a t-shirt. So for those interested and that aren't already on that list, um, I recommend that you sign up and maybe get some goodies and, and get tips delivered right to your email box every month. Next slide. And that's all I have, and I believe there'll be questions at the end, and I'll ha be happy to answer those then. Thank you so much, Victoria. That was a great presentation. Um, we will keep questions to the end of uh, both presentations, but I just want to say thank you so much. And if you could please uh, share the link to the newsletter so anyone interested in signing up could just click on it and, and sign up for it. Um, and we'll continue with uh, Doug's presentation. Oh, good afternoon. Um, nice to see a few uh, names on our participant list that uh, I recognize and uh, thank you all for taking time to uh, join us for our presentation today on a subject that is very, uh, that I'm very passionate about and I appreciate the opportunity to share my passion regarding water management with you. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into it. Uh, if you'll go to the next slide, please. <clears throat> All right, this is a quote from National Geographic uh, from 1993. All of the water that will ever be is right now. Uh, it's a pretty profound statement. And I think uh, that what that means to me is that uh, we all need to be good stewards of one of our most valuable natural resources uh, being water. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a tool that I really like. Um, it's called usdroughtmonitor.org. And when you uh, fire this uh, website up, it has a, uh, the entire United States uh, showing uh, drought conditions. And then you can sort it by region. So for example, you could put the Southwest region on here 
uh, or you could uh, sort it by state as I've done here and just have a map of the state of Arizona showing the drought conditions. Uh, this particular uh, slide is from October 6th of 2020. It's updated uh, every Thursday. Uh, now, if we think about what happened last year, we had record number of 90 degree days, 95 degree days, 100 degree days, 105 degree days, 110 degree days, 115 degree days. Uh, we went uh, 28 days where the temperature uh, never got below uh, 90, even at night. And we had the hottest, latest temperatures in November that we'd ever had. Also, our uh, typical average annual rainfall is somewhere between eight and nine inches. And uh, we had uh, a little bit north of five inches uh, last year. Uh, so go ahead and go to the next slide and let's see what we're looking like right now. Here is uh, that same uh, tool from March 23rd, so about two weeks ago. Uh, showing the uh, more updated uh, drought map of the state of Arizona, kind of based on uh, what I just talked about with all those uh, uh, weather events that occurred last year. Uh, so uh, this dark area, uh, if you look over at the legend, represents uh, exceptional drought. Uh, the red areas are uh, extreme drought. Uh, this kind of uh, orange color is uh, severe drought. And then we have this color down here is uh, uh, abnormally, I'm sorry, that is uh, moderate drought. And then we got a little uh, abnormally dry down here. So the entire state of Arizona essentially is covered in uh, some kind of a drought condition. And about half of the state is covered in uh, exceptional drought. Uh, so this is kind of the why of the presentation for me uh, today. Why are we doing this? And it goes back to uh, being good stewards of uh, one of our most valuable natural resources. Next slide, please. So I want to have a little fun uh, today as we uh, kind of jump into the presentation. And, and basically, if you're watering this much, you're watering a little too much. Next slide, please. So here was a new product that uh, the Bernard Food Company came out with uh, a while ago, uh, dehydrated water. Uh, the instructions say empty contents of can into one gallon of water, stir until dissolved, chill and serve. At which point, of course, you have one gallon of water. So this product never really took off for obvious reasons, but it seemed like a great idea. Next slide, please. <clears throat> A lot of the things I want to talk about today to start off are just common sense. Um, a sprinkler system, uh, we don't put it in and, and just forget about it. It needs uh, attention. Uh, it needs kind of a routine uh, inspection to make sure that everything is working right. So in this case where this particular sprinkler nozzle should be adjusted to spray a 180 degree or a half pattern to water the lawn, it's out of adjustment and it's actually spraying about a 270 degree pattern. Uh, so it's uh, spraying the sidewalk. And you can see from the condition of this sidewalk uh, that this kind of thing on this property has been going on for a long time and it's just causing premature wear on the paved surface or the uh, concrete surface as well. So just common sense, uh, you know, adjust the sprinkler head. Uh, next slide. Uh, here is a sprinkler head, uh, same property out in Fountain Hills actually has two things going on. Number one, the nozzle itself is broken, which is going to impact how that uh, distributes water. And also, we've got a little thing right here that if you were walking this property and looked closely, you'd see water bubbling up right here. Uh, sprinkler head has a thing called a wiper seal, and after a, a period of years, that wiper seal degrades under UV. And uh, so this is actually called a wiper seal leak. And at a minimum on this sprinkler head, the nozzle and the cap should be replaced to get a new wiper seal. Uh, so again, just a matter of walking the property and looking at these kinds of things and, and making some minor adjustments. Next slide. <clears throat> 
All right, here's a, a little maintenance issue, uh, a kind of a common sense issue. Uh, if you're opening a controller and finding a snake in it, uh, that, you know, might need to give that a little maintenance and at least get the snake out of there. Next slide, please. Uh, here's another little critter I found inside of a sprinkler controller. Uh, so you can see the 14 gauge uh, white wire and the 14 gauge red wire coming in from the valves and uh, hooking up to the uh, terminal strip on the controller. And uh, again, we've got this black widow in there. So uh, got to be careful. You never know, quite know what you're going to find in, uh, in the sprinkler controllers. And uh, if you find these kinds of things, please uh, get them cleaned out of there. Next slide. All right, let's talk about valve boxes. Um, you know, I really um, get discouraged when I open a valve box on a property and see it like this. Uh, again, common maintenance practice uh, would be to make sure that this is cleaned out so that you can access the valve, uh, inspect the components, turn the valve on and off manually, uh, make sure the valve is not leaking. So I wanna encourage you to please keep your valve boxes cleaned out. Next slide. And here's another example of a valve box. Uh, here you can see we have the valve and the solenoid and the filter, and we have two very large toads in there. And the reason why I said toads are in this valve box is one of these components is leaking and has created a very moist environment. Um, and uh, so these toads have taken up residence in there. That's their home. You probably didn't like me opening the valve box. Um, but again, I really want to encourage you to keep your valve boxes cleaned out. Next slide. Okay, along the lines of uh, cleaning your valve boxes out, I ran into this uh, little critter uh, two years ago on a property in East Mesa inside of a valve box. Uh, here's the solenoid and the edge of the valve box. Luckily, it was March, and so, uh, said uh, critter was still a little snoozy. Um, I stood back and I plunked it with a little rock, at which point in time, two things became obvious. Number one, what kind of snake it was, and number two, the fact that it wasn't dead. So needless to say, I didn't do a lot of inspection of that valve, just kind of left the lid off of that, but please keep your valve boxes cleaned. Next slide, please. All right, now what I wanna do is I wanna start looking at some water management features and benefits that we have in our industry uh, that hopefully you're able to take uh, uh, into consideration on your property to help save water. Uh, when I visit a property, I look at three things in this uh, order. I look at the pressure that the system's being operated at, uh, a system has to have enough water and pressure to make it work properly, but too much pressure is uh, not necessarily a good thing. Uh, next, I'm looking at the sprinkler nozzles themselves <clears throat> um, and seeing if there are any opportunities there. And last but not least, once we feel like the system is hydraulically sound, we're looking at what are called smart controllers. Let's go to the next slide, please. Um, a lot of our uh, turf areas in this area are what I'll call smaller uh, versus other parts of the country. And so we're using spray heads to irrigate them. And traditional spray heads as we know and love them are one of the least efficient ways we have of irrigating. They have a distribution uniformity, which is how we measure the efficiency of a sprinkler system of about 40%. And so what that means is that out of all of the water that's coming through the water meter that you're paying for, really only about 40% of it is doing you any good. Um, so as we go through the last couple minutes here, we wanna talk about ways that you can hopefully make your spray heads more efficient. Um, so I wanna talk uh, about some advanced water management features uh, of spray heads that are available. Uh, what you see pictured here is something called low head drainage. And what that means is there's uh, elevation change in this uh, turf area. And when the valve shuts off and the sprinklers go back down, what's happening here is that all of the water is leaking out of the lowest head and emptying the pipe. Uh, again, that water isn't doing us any good at all. 
And so the next time the valve comes on, we have to fill up the line again. Uh, so we're paying for that extra water. Plus we're subjecting the system to water hammer or surge pressure or premature wear and tear on the sprinkler equipment as a result of this low head drainage. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so the manufacturers um, all have a feature. Uh, it's an optional feature you can get with your spray heads uh, that has a built-in check valve down here in the bottom of the sprinkler body. And they're called either a SAM check valve or just a check valve. SAM uh, stands for either seal o matic or stop o matic and if you have a perfectly flat landscape, you do not need this optional feature. Uh, it's for where you have a slope and all the water's draining out this lowest head, maybe even the lowest two heads. Uh, so if you retrofit this sprinkler head right here with a spray head body that has the SAM feature, uh, and then maybe the next one if you need to do that, uh, that will eliminate that low head drainage and trap the water in the pipe and prevent it all from draining out and being wasted. Next slide, please. Uh, what we're depicting here <clears throat> is a spray head system that's operating at too high of a pressure. Uh, spray heads are typically only cataloged up to 30 PSI. And if they're operated at much higher pressure than that, we get these real small water droplets that are susceptible to evaporation and drifting away, especially in a windy condition. Uh, the sprinkler head actually uses more water uh, because of the higher pressure, but less efficiently. Uh, so typically you're having to turn your uh, timer uh, or the time on your sprinkler controller up to try to compensate for this. And again, it's just wasting water. Next slide, please. Uh, so this slide is showing uh, a tool that's very valuable in our industry. Uh, it's not a great picture of it, but underneath the nozzle, between the uh, nozzle and the, the stem of the sprinkler head, we've installed in this picture a thing called a Hunter pressure gauge adapter, uh, which sells for about $5. And then we've put a pressure gauge in it and so we can actually turn the zone on and take a pressure reading with the zone and the sprinkler head running. And although you can't see uh, the number on the gauge very well, this spray head is actually operating at 60 PSI, much higher than what they're uh, intended to operate. Next slide, please. So there's a couple things we can do if you have a high pressure issue, but uh, the one I'm going to talk about today is a, a, a another version of a spray head that has a built in pressure regulator in the stem of the sprinkler head to regulate the pressure coming out the nozzle to whatever that ideal operating pressure is. And so the main purpose of that is to eliminate the misting and fogging and help that sprinkler head to water much more efficiently. Next slide, please. All right, the next thing I want to talk about are what are called high efficiency nozzles. Uh, as I said earlier, a spray head uh, with a traditional nozzle on it is one of the least efficient ways we have of irrigating uh, with a distribution uniformity of about 40%. Uh, several years ago now, uh, several of the manufacturers have come out with what are called high efficiency nozzles. And in some cases, just by changing the nozzle, that's all you have to do, uh, you can almost double the efficiency of your existing spray head system from 40% DU to 70% DU. Uh, so this is a big deal with all the spray heads that we have in this area, especially all the HOAs in this area that have spray heads. They could really benefit from this and make their systems much more efficient. Next slide, please. Uh, kind of just want to key in on this uh, one slide here. This is one of the high efficiency nozzles called a Hunter MP rotator. And the thing that I really want to just kind of key in on here is how little water it uses and what's called the precipitation rate. Uh, you'll see where I have the cursor here. The precipitation rate of this sprinkler is 0.39 inches per hour. A typical spray head has a precipitation rate of 1.5 inches per hour. 
Um, so if you think in terms of now, I heard what Victoria said about our monsoon the last couple of years, and I agree, but go with me on this. If, if you were to look out your window and a monsoon storm was going on and it was raining at a rate of 1.5 inches per hour, what would you see out there? It would be flooding uh, at that rate, but that's how, how fast a traditional spray head applies water. It's faster than what our Arizona soils can accept the water. So this particular product, the MP Rotor, uh, has a precipitation rate of 0.39 inches per hour. So it's applying water about 25% the rate of a traditional spray head, more closely resembling uh, the soil's ability to accept the water. Next slide, please. Um, a lot of uh, uh, people are doing turf conversions and uh, in the interest of time, I'm not going to talk too much about this, but here's a product that you can use uh, to retrofit a turf spray head system, uh, picking a centrally located spray head in the zone and uh, retrofitting this retro drip adapter in it in place of that sprinkler. It's got a built in pressure regulator and filtration, and you can then use this device to convert to uh, drip irrigation without having to do anything at the valve. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> All right, so as we said earlier, uh, once we feel like we have the system hydraulically sound, and I raced through that information, uh, but if we have the pressure acceptable and we've looked at our uh, nozzles and you know seen if they're high efficiency, then we wanna start looking at smart controller technology. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and you'll have to click that another time. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, so real quick, uh, a, a smart controller is a controller that receives input from either a weather sensor or a soil moisture sensor and automatically adjusts on a daily basis. Uh, in this slide, uh, what we're doing with the yellow line, this would be someone who adjusts their sprinkler timer once a month. And so it waters the same amount every day. Blue line is somebody who adjusts their controller on a weekly basis. And so anything that's below the yellow line is water that's being saved because they're adjusting it on a weekly basis based on the weather. And of course, over here, we are actually having to water more. So in some cases, the yellow line is watering too much. In some cases, it's not watering enough. Uh, the green line is if you were uh, able to adjust your controller every single day. And of course, that's not really practical or possible, but that's the benefit of a smart controller. A smart controller based on input from a weather sensor or a soil moisture sensor automatically adjusts your sprinkler uh, run times on a daily basis. Next slide. And a couple of, uh, um, I don't know, Interesting fa facts from our friends at Rainbird, smart controllers could save nearly 24 billion gallons per year in the United States. It's equivalent to running 7,000 garden hoses 24 hours a day for one year. Next slide. <clears throat> and this one says the average uh, household replacing a conventional irrigation timer with a smart controller can save more than 10,000 gallons of water a year. Most of our smart controllers feature the EPA water sense uh, logo, which means that when the federal government tested the controller, it has to save 20% or more of the water. Next slide. Uh, we even have uh, controllers now at, a, at the residential level in terms of features and benefits and the price point uh, that allow you to use smart controller technology at the residential level. And these are going to typically be Wi-Fi based and cloud based. Uh, you can uh, access them from any computer, iPad, uh, cell phone. And one of the coolest things, in my opinion, is that your cell phone becomes a remote, not only while you're on the property, walking around, inspecting and doing your routine maintenance, but anywhere you have cell coverage. So this is just one particular smart controller uh, available at the residential level. There's many, many, many. Uh, residential and many, many uh, commercial smart controllers. Next slide. Uh, getting 
more and more important is the ability to deal with flow. And these smart controllers, even at the residential, have the ability to learn and monitor and react to flow. So once it's learned flow and the sprinkler system is operating, if it's detecting a problem, because the flow is not what it's supposed to be, uh, the controller being a smart controller will proactively take action and try to shut off the problem area. And then it sends you within three minutes a text message or an email alert. So flow is getting to be a bigger and bigger thing. Next slide. Uh, and uh, as we ramp down, I think I just have one more slide after this. Uh, a thing that I think is really important that we don't promote enough is the fact that a lot of the municipalities in the Phoenix metro area, uh, these are all members of uh, Arizona Municipal Water Users Association or AMWA, have rebates that will help to uh, pay for part of the cost of a smart controller or a high efficiency nozzle upgrade or a turf conversion. And uh, in, in our business, everything is kind of about return on investment. And uh, if you can get a rebate for what you're doing, it helps to uh, really greatly reduce the uh, return on investment. So I'm going to end with the why we started off showing the uh, map of the state of Arizona and kind of the serious uh, drought condition we're in. And we really want to, uh, again, be proactive, uh, not face punitive uh, restrictions like they have in California. But we really want to get to the point where this isn't the case uh, that you're seeing here on the slide. Only wash the stinky parts. It's a drought. Do something. So thank you for uh, participating in the uh, presentation. I appreciate your attention and we're gonna use the rest of our time to entertain any questions that you might have for either Victoria or myself. Thank you so much for the presentation, Doug. Okay, here we are. So there are a few questions in the chat and thank you so much for those who asked. And one of the first questions I have here is for Victoria. Um, so someone asked, I didn't see my city or town as a partner for water use it wisely. What can I do as a private citizen to encourage their participation? Interesting. So, um, if you go to Water Use It Wise's webpage, we have a detailed list of, of who is our partner. So if they weren't, although I think everyone should have been listed on that, that website. But it's always good to just write an email, right? Send a note to your mayor um, or your council members or even water conservation staff um, from your city and let them know, hey, you know, we this seems like a great program. Um, what maybe? Why aren't we we a part of it? But also know that. Even if your city is not a part of that, you can still go on this website and access all of this information. So don't let that be a hindrance to accessing um, the stuff that we have um, on the web or following us or our newsletter. Like that is available to all of our all of res all of the residents in Arizona. <laughs> Thank you, Victoria. I definitely liked your presentation, and I I agree with the fact that Water Use Wisely is one of those very instrumental. Um, organizations and partners in providing the best available information for residents and anyone interested. Um, I, I have a question for you. Uh, what since the pandemic started, right? You had a lot of different um, events that were in person before that. Do you have any events happening virtually or any new events happening right now? Yes, so um, I believe just about every at least city. So I'm more familiar with probably what the cities are offering rather than maybe some of our, our other water provider um, and members. But most of the cities are having virtual options, um, whether those are pre-recorded. So in Peoria, we offer pre-recorded classes. The last two um, semesters, you could call them, we are going to be doing a mixture of in-person and uh, virtual for the fall. So starting in September. Um, and a lot of cities are, are also doing that. They're trying to figure out what we're offering upcoming, but we have a library basically of these fantastic classes that are uh, that are webinar style or recorded that folks can access. So if those classes and that list is still on that water use it wise the calendar, go back a few months, right? Check through and see which ones you can find to, to watch or just go to your city's website on our conservation page, find their classes, and there should be links to all of that amazing information that should be available for everyone. That's good. Thank you. 
And I have a question in the chat for Doug. Are there okay. any resources to adjusting sprinkler heads? Um, I can't, as much as I hate to say it, uh, based on all of my years in the experience, I can't really think of any uh, resources other than maybe uh, whatever instruction booklets come uh, in the box uh, when you would buy those sprinkler heads. Typically, if there's any tools required to adjust those sprinkler heads, the manufacturers include uh, some of the tools in the box, uh, but also um, the manufacturers websites are going to be very helpful. Uh, they generally are going to have uh, an informational page or brochure on the product that describes all the features and benefits. And then typically there's an installation guide that talks about how you would actually install the product. And I, I think that that would be probably a good uh, a reference for uh, learning how to make any adjustments to the sprinkler head itself. Thank you. And thank you as well um, for your presentation. Do you have more to add? Yes, if I, Please, uh, if I ahead, may. I'm, I'm thinking on the fly here. <laughs> um, the company that I work for is Ewing Irrigation, and we have 17 locations in the state of Arizona. And when I do these kinds of presentations, I'm not here to necessarily promote Ewing over anybody else or any manufacturer over anybody else. This isn't the time or the place, but my point being, there are a lot of irrigation distributor uh, locations in the state of Arizona. Uh, you can use those as a resource or reach out directly to the uh, manufacturer's representative. We're very blessed in this area to have uh, several employees of Hunter that live in the area, several employees for uh, Toro, uh, Ear Troll that live in the area, and also several that, uh, Rainbird employees that live here in the valley. So. They are available at your beck and call to come and visit a property and provide education and, and do training. Uh, they love doing that just the same as I do. Thank you so much for that additional information. And thank you for your presentation. I definitely enjoyed the critter picture. Thank you. But it, it, they are a really good lesson on keeping those valve, valve boxes cleaned out. Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, also, I uh, love your quote, you can't manage what you can't measure. That's something that is very true. So we hope that um, all the listeners here took away those lessons and those takeaways that you guys mentioned. Um, I want to ask the audience, are there any additional questions? Would anyone like to unmute yourselves? We have six more minutes. Um, yeah. Oh, I just found. I have a quote here or a chat here. Hi, I work at Ewing. I didn't happen to join this call today. Here is a link to you in videos on YouTube, some of which cover how to adjust sprinkler heads. Thank you so much, Robin. Would you like to unmute yourself and kind of explain the, the link a little bit? One, this is Robin. I I live here in Phoenix. I just happened to join the call. I didn't even um, know Doug was making a presentation. This is so great. Um, I, I work, um, on some of the Ewing YouTube videos and, uh, like I said, in the chat, some of our videos cover how to adjust specific sprinkler heads. So if you just go to YouTube and type in Ewing irrigation in the search field, uh, you may be able to find a video that covers. Um, your specific type of sprinkler head, but like Doug said, um, your best resource will be your sprinkler head manuals and maybe other distributors or manufacturers YouTube videos as well. Thank you, Robin. Thank you so Thank much, you everybody. Robin. Yeah, and, and this is a great place to just share all that information about all those different resources that are available out there. Um, so I really appreciate that. And we have a few more minutes, but I just wanted to thank the presenters and let everyone know that we have a couple more webinars coming up and they're on the screen. We have on April 16 at noon, uh, using water education to conserve water and protect our watersheds. And then we have on April 22nd, which is Earth Day at noon, we'll have principles for water wise landscaping. So a little bit more information to supplement the information that we just have today. 
um, Water User Wisely definitely offers a lot of different resources. So I would encourage every, everyone to check out the website. And Doug, are you available to answer any questions outside of this webinar? Sure. Definitely. Thank you. Uh, Would you like to provide a, an email address that people can reach you at? Absolutely. My uh, email address is the letter D and then my last name, Donahue, D O N A H U E at Ewing, E W I N G, irrigation.com. Two D's at the beginning, D Donahue at ewingirrigation.com. Thank you. And I have one more question that just popped in the chat. Uh, does anyone know uh, Ewing used to recycle old controllers? Do they still do it? We do. Uh, we partner with uh, Hunter Industries, uh, which is one of the major manufacturers uh, to uh, recycle all the different manufacturers controllers. Those can be dropped off at any Ewing branch. Okay. Thank you so much. And let's see, I think I have one more slide. And then Sus, thank you. Thank you all for <laughs> taking part in our Water Awareness Month webinar and hope to see you all in the next one. And we're finishing two minutes early, but I just want to thank everyone and, and hope to see you soon in the other ones. All right. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Take thank care. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.